You, you want to count it in this time? Hey, you can count it. All right. One, two, one, two, three, four. How would you describe the music that you're composing for Gilded Destiny? I would describe it as a dream come true. Hi everyone, I'm Mark, a producer for Gilded Destiny. Today's Dev Diary will be more of a podcast format, where I'll be interviewing the composer for the soundtrack for Gilded Destiny. Our composer, John Skoog, is based in Sweden and has worked on a number of film scores and other projects. He recently was a finalist, being awarded second place in the Puglia Soundtrack Awards, where he was considered for his recent work on three films. Well, without further ado, let's meet John. So, John, welcome. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So let's kind of just jump right into it. Yep. Um, so let's get to know you a little bit. Why don't you, if you can, talk about some of the past experiences, maybe what projects you've worked on. Absolutely. So go from there. My name is John. I've been a media composer for five years now, focusing mainly on film, TV, and uh, done some documentaries and uh, commercials in the past. But this, Gilded Destiny, is actually my first game to write music for. Mm. So yeah, of course, really? I'm very excited. Nice. Um, how How is it different versus working on uh, movies? Ooh, it's... Like, have you come uh, across anything? I'm just speaking from vague experience, because, the, like I said, this is my first yeah. game. Um, but uh, right, and obviously your experience is heavily influenced by the back and forth that we've been having yeah, in of the course. development process. But that, but that process is very, very similar with film, uh, feature film mm -hmm. or short film as well, actually, because I need to. Mm -hmm. It's it's easier and more productive to have someone to throw ideas at and uh, they tell you what they don't like and what they like in everything in your work. So you sort of create the score together more often than not. Mm -hmm. So it's a true right. collaboration from start to finish product and that is it's the same thing here I think um, there are some uh, different things not just game versus film but since the game is sort of focused on a specific type of music whereas a film it's uh, quite limitless what you can do with, with electronic music and orchestral music but uh, since we focus on only on a specific type of music, it sort of became a bit limited than uh, mm -hmm. I would say a film is. Right. I, I guess we gave you some very specific requirements about uh, Gilded Destiny and what we were looking for. Yeah, yeah. So how would you describe the music that you're composing for Gilded Destiny? I would describe it as a dream come true. Mm -hmm. What I mean with that is that when I started learning the piano, I uh, started classical pianist, I went to school and everything. I really, really liked classical music myself. And then I realized mm -hmm. no one buys classical music that is written by someone that is alive today. So that doesn't okay. make sense. But a friend of mine introduced me like, why don't you do film music? And film music is not is not a genre in specific that is film music because film music serves the film. It, so it can be any type of music, um, which I love, actually. But the, the thing is, I, oh, I, my favorite type of music is a classical music. So be able to score classical music, again, so to speak, in a fresh new way, but it's still classical music, that's... That is a dream come true. That's because in a movie you, you have to adapt to certain emotions and everything. Mm. And that can sometimes break the fact that this is not classical music anymore. It's just orchestral music that becomes film music. Absolutely. So you can sort of get what the audience wants, what the producer wants, what the, everything like that. But in, right. in this project, we can go full on 100% classical music. And uh, that's what we're aiming for. That's what we want. Exactly. That's our goal. Yeah, um, exactly. And some of the pieces, as um, as our followers will ultimately come to learn, are complete works of art that stand alone in 
at present day, and I think they would also stand alone, you know, what, uh, 150, 200 years ago as well. Hmm. And Thank I, you. I think, yeah, it's, it's, I, I think that it's um, a beautiful marriage with the music and the game, and I think they're going to come together very nicely. Yeah, with Gilded Destiny, one of the things that we're trying to do is just really be very true to the time period. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, and uh, I know that some of our feedback to you sometimes has been um, make it more authentic, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. uh, make it more true to the time period. You know, this is great, but we can hear a bit of modern influence. Yeah, yeah. Um, and yeah, really trying to stay true. So, yeah. No, that's, that's amazing, good. that I, feedback. Because uh, that way, when I try to fly off, you will drag me down, and the uh, same way in reverse as well. Yeah. So it's uh, it's working very, very well. Why don't we discuss some of the back and forth that we've had as we're um, composing? So, I guess what were some of the challenges that you faced um, in composing, uh, you know, classical music for a video game? Um, well, to uh... To start with the first one, the process, it's sort of, uh, in rough terms, I would write something and I would send it to you and you would approve and you would tell me what you didn't like, what you like, and we go back and forth. I would have made right. changes, I would have completed them, or I would just get rid of it and start all over again. So it's very intuitive that way, I think. It came from nothing mm -hmm. and I was like, what do you think of this? I would like this, but right. we don't like that. And, Back and forth, right. uh, total collaboration all the way, I think. The most difficult thing for me, especially in the beginning, was uh, to make it... Uh, I wrote classical music the way I like classical music. And I like classical music with uh, high energy, low energy, and everything in between. Which you mm -hmm. sort of right away said, this will be too much distraction for the players. So that exactly. would be the biggest challenge, yeah. I would say. Right. As someone who likes classical music, as a musician, that was one of the hardest bits of feedback to give. Yeah, yeah. Uh, in that I liked what you were doing. I loved the, you know, pianissimo going to the fortissimo and oh, all that. Yeah. And it's like, uh, I love it, but I don't think that's going to fit into gameplay. So it was really this uh, give and take, um, you know, or... Um, I, I feel like we've reached a happy medium in, in you know, kind of keeping it in, in, in that middle dynamic range for the most part. But uh, I, I think know, so, too. Yeah, but, uh, but then it again, was it's also... not just dynamics. Mm -hmm. no, yeah, that's true. Yeah. But there's also yeah, it... a point where uh, it was quite difficult because uh, when uh, we were talking about reducing some of the energy, it mm -hmm. it's almost became film music instead, you know? Because right, right, right music, right classical music is supposed to tell us a whole story, but then reducing right. it to a, to a medium of everything, and that became film music, and then you would would say this is too modern, you know. So it was sort of <laughs> yeah. it was very very hard to find that perfect balance, but we yeah. we definitely got there for sure. I I think so too. Yeah. 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 So all of this influenced what we are seeing in our soundtrack, right? And I think I, I think we have a a good representation of these different uh, music styles and um, orchestrations it, within our soundtrack. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, so with that uh, in mind, um, how let, let's talk about just kind of the process and like or your creative process. Um, so what types of instruments uh, did you choose? I know that uh, as we said the pieces span the beginning you know around 1820 ending around 1910 so there's this wider range of orchestrations uh instruments being used ensembles all of this so um what instruments did you use how did you use them um well it really depended on which kind of track i was working on that's yeah. uh, when i when i when i came up with an idea I was sort of like does this sound best as a big orchestra or does it sound best as a solo instrument that is more right. scaled down so it really was based on the music in, in itself i would say 
right. Um, right. But uh, some instruments are used in every track, I would say. Strings are such an example. Most of mm -hmm. the woodwinds, most of the brass family are pretty much used in all of the tracks. I, I know that clarinet, for example, which I'm personally connected to, and then uh, we don't have any saxophone tracks, unfortunately. Um, but then again, there really wasn't much written for saxophone. No, um, I don't think so. It, Nothing not, that not I've in, ever come not across. Until, no. <laughs> plenty of beautiful pieces for clarinet, though. And that's one of those instruments that I think really came to prominence towards the latter end of our time frame. Yeah, absolutely. I agree. I agree. So one of the other things as well is that since we are doing things um, with digital instruments, mm. mostly, but then also live recordings as well, um, I think that presented a unique problem too, in that classical music, especially once you get more into the Romantic era pieces that we have in our soundtrack, a digital instrument simply can't replicate that emotion that a player a, a, a human player can hmm. so i think on the tracks where it was crucial where there was a solo violin or solo cellist we we got a live recording yeah but in some of the you know in some of the background uh, emotion is is equally important there so what were some of the tools or strategies uh, that you used to put that emotion into the pieces, even though digital instruments were being used? Well, uh, firstly, I would play and record every instrument live, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. digitally, <laughs> mm -hmm. so to speak. I would not use uh, what's called a, a step recorder, okay. which is... Um, yeah regular thing where you type in a full note it will become a full note and stuff like that i would only mm -hmm. use that for runs um yeah. but i would play every instrument with modulation and expressions and techniques um mm -hmm. very very detailed to make that mm -hmm. instrument sound as good as possible then it becomes right. then i have five other instruments in the wooden family to, to mix them together to sit mm -hmm. as a whole then I would need to think of the how you would hear them in an orchestra as an audience because you would hear the strings in the front, you would hear percussion mm. in, the, in the back and everything in between. So I need mm. to adjust the voicings of everything so it's perfectly seated as if, right. there, were, uh, as, as if there were an actual orchestra. Mm. So it would be right. like taking an orchestra and take each individual player make them play it, just that I played it instead. I would right. never yeah, ever so copy something, copy-paste. Right. Um, right. I would always re-record it. Right. So, so yeah, that's an interesting uh, point as well. So you play on the piano um, all of the voices that we have um, that our that our soundtrack represents that it, it, you know is in our is in our soundtrack you played all of these voices with the different digital instruments yourself yes <clears throat> uh, yes so nothing nothing was point and click everything has that own personal time feel and it is all that emotion from your personal playing yeah um i would say mm -hmm. at least 90 percent of it Right. Um, there are some instruments that are very, very hard to control. Percussion right. is one of them, because yeah. the velocity on my keyboard, I work with velocity between 1 and 127, which is 127 right. is the maximum power. Max. One is lowest that you can press down on the key, which mm -hmm. will become the power that you hit the drums or whatever. Right. And uh, it's, it's very, very hard because if you clash a cymbal at the 90, it will sound uh, very, very loud. But if you clash it at 85, mm -hmm. it will sound like nothing like h half the power. Sometimes I would mm. do it so it sounds um, quite equal. Right. And Interesting. Yeah. 
but also, uh, like cool. I said, only on those on the instrument that is very, very hard to copycat on the piano of the velocity. Right, right, right. Yeah, um, I, I, I know, I know that I could tell that uh, mixing some of the digital instruments uh, was a challenge. Um, some of the feedback I know that you got from Kenneth and me was um, it sounds a bit synthetic mm. um, and all of that, but. Uh, to what you're saying, not once did it ever feel that um, things were too rhythmic, too on the beat. Mm. It was always uh, that time feel had that very emotive human touch to it. Mm. I think so too. So. Yeah, yeah. like I said, uh, recording the instruments individually, but also mm. I like to record uh, co the conductor track as well. Mm. Uh, so yeah, Tell um, us about that. Yeah, that's sort of I programmed it as I, I press down a key to keep the to mm. tap the tempo more or less. So it's sort of mm. like I'm sitting here conducting the music, mm. and that really gives the feel of me actually conducting the orchestra. The orchestra will play it, and I will conduct it with one hand. And on really really good days, I would close my eyes and air conduct with the other hand. So that gives me the feels of when to do. Uh, pull back time, give time, and stuff like that. So right. so it becomes more uh, natural and more right. intuitive. Right. Yeah. No, amazing. Um, it, too bad we can't, uh, we don't have a video to go along with that with you air conducting with your left hand. And <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Some um, days, perhaps. Yeah, that, I mean, that's one of my... <laughs> That's one of my favorite things about going to uh, live performances of uh, classical music is uh, the, watching the conductor. As oh well. yeah, yeah, me as well. Uh, you know, and uh, you can, it, you know, it's really a, a large element of it, right? Because you see the emotion through the conductor of what you're about to hear. Because there's yeah. always that slight lag versus you know when he's conducting the beats and you know his his uh, signals to the orchestra, and then you hear what he's conducting. Yeah, so, absolutely, yeah. and that's a, that's a, th those are the good conductors. Yeah. Also, when yeah. you hear, hear the musician trust the conductor to one hundred percent, and they follow everything, that's when the good mm -hmm. music starts. In this case, I recorded right. all instruments, so all instruments are me. So, so of course, they will listen to me when I conduct them. So it works mm -hmm. perfectly for me. Perfect. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Good. Good. And then. And then, yeah, so on some of the tracks, we also had uh, solo violinists uh, yes. recorded um, and all that. And then I believe we also had a solo cellist too, right? Yes. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, so the process basically was they recorded, sent you the recording, and then you input that in line with the harmonies. Yeah, right? exactly. I would create yeah. a MIDI mockup for them. Mm -hmm. And each, right. both the violinist and the cellist, I would send the track in full with a MIDI violin or a cello. I would also right. send them one track without the solo instrument and a right. track with the click track as well. So right. they will have all material needed so they can record it. Right. Well, I, I, I know you do that because um, you sent me a uh, the same thing for clarinet. Mm, um, yeah, for me to record. But yeah, yeah, the sheet music which, as well. Yeah, yeah, and the sheet music too. So I actually just got my clarinet back from the shop. Awesome. So I need to, and it's playing much better now. Apparently, three of the pads on the clarinet had been eaten by moths. So no wonder I was uh, not playing very well. Still making a sound, which was impressive. But uh, yeah, so now I'm, <laughs> I'm back in that mode where I need to uh, get it out and uh, you know I'll, I'll record. So hey. Uh, yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll, I have I'll something to look to forward you. to. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. After a lot of practice on my part, but yeah. Yeah. Um, you want to explain mm -hmm. that a bit further? That's one of the tracks that has uh, a very crucial clarinet solo intro that Mark mm -hmm. is going to record. Hopefully. Hopefully. The as it, uh, I mean. As it is, uh, it sounds pretty good, but I definitely hope to be able to get that down um, uh, and actually record it myself. Yeah. We'll see. Um, I guess one way or the other, um, you know, it'll, it'll sound great. So, um, 
and I may record it with saxophone. Hey? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who's gonna know? Yeah. Time period. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> One of the Easter eggs, like Gilded Destiny Time Traveler Edition. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a saxophone and harpsichord. We we need to make a track like that. Oh actually. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's very very off, like two hundred years apart, something like <laughs> <Yeah>. that. <laughs> yeah. I mean, hey, re release that in a, a future uh, a future update for Gilded Destiny. Oh, yeah, yeah, or, mixed or versions. Something. And then we have uh, one with electronic dance music. Hey, perfect. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I, I'm, I'm sure uh, soon Kenneth is going to hop in and say, yeah, you're not doing that for Gilded Destiny. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's true. That's true. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, John. Um, so... What is your favorite piece, aside from, of course, the upcoming saxophone, house, harpsichord track? Mm -hmm. um, other than that, what's your favorite piece uh, that you've worked on for Gilded Destiny? Um, well, I would, I would claim two pieces in uh, two mm -hmm. different categories, um, mm -hmm. because I had a lot of fun writing all of the music, um, especially the last one. Mm -hmm. That was sort of like, it's such an enjoyment for me. It was very, very fun to write it. Um, but I've always carried the first pitch I did for you, which later became right. the main theme of, uh, right. of the game. That right. theme and that music is always like representative, I think. So it's always in the yeah. back of the head. But yeah. if I would pull out the album and pick one mm -hmm. song to listen to, it would probably be the piano trio with mm. the piano violin and cello yeah. because mm. that piece was the most beautiful i think right and and in that one you were playing live of course on piano yeah and then there's also recording of the cellist and of the violinist as well yes right? yeah yeah from different yeah. parts of the world which is amazing mm. amazing I think. yeah because remote work and everything but overall a great process um, and I will say certainly it uh, has I feel boosted my own musicality as well um, you know interacting with you uh, providing this sort of critique from a very specific lens in that I we needed classical music that was first and foremost classical and true to the time period um, and then of course second not being too classical too romantic too dynamic to be distracting from gameplay yeah which I yeah. guess is ultimately you know the purpose of our game of Gilded Destiny so all right John well yeah, so maybe uh, one last question. Yeah. yeah. Uh, do you like uh, what do you like more, developing games or playing games? Hmm. So this is an interesting balance. Um, I I love so I love challenges, right? And I think the challenge of but we'll both have challenges, right? Depending on what games you play, especially with strategy games. You know, you're always oh, yeah. coming up yeah. with a, strat a strategy or a challenge that you want to overcome. Uh, you know, or in Gilded Destiny, for example, you want to conquer a particular region or achieve a certain goal for your country. Um, so that's one type of challenge. But then, so right now, I'm, I mean, I'm fully immersed in the development of Gilded Destiny. So I think right now, if you were to ask me, I think my answer is I, I'm loving the process of developing the game, kind of seeing all of the stuff that goes behind the scenes, you know, from music mm -hmm. to features to mechanics to, you know, from warfare to logistics and, and you know, and population mechanics and how do you define population groups and all of these things. Like, it's just um, very interesting uh liaising with our developers and looking at it from a you know, kind of an umbrella perspective as a producer but you know the thing is when you work on video games and you produce them and develop them you have less time to actually play the games so I oh yeah yeah you know, so, 
So yeah, but no, it's still fun. It's still great. So yeah. Um, That's a typical thing for filmmakers as well. Mm -hmm. You love you love movies so much that you decide you want to do them, and yeah. when you do them, you don't have time to watch them. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, yeah it's the sure. same thing. I yeah, guess. Yeah, for sure. It's, yeah, such is life. It's either way. Yeah. Is there anything you'd like to say to our listeners? Um, maybe to say, how can they find some more of your music? Can they follow you anywhere? Feel free to check out my website at uh, johnschoolmusic.com. You can also listen to my music at various streaming platforms, such as Spotify, YouTube Music, Apple Music, etc. And uh, you can also check out my Instagram at johnschoolmusic. Yeah. Well, John, it's it's been a pleasure chatting with you as always. Yeah, likewise. And I think we'll probably end it there. Well, that concludes today's Gilded Podcast. Thanks for listening, everyone. And thank you to John for taking the time to chat with me. If you'd like to learn more about John and hear more of his outstanding work, check him out on Spotify or at johnskoogmusic.com. We look forward to releasing more of Gilded Destiny's soundtracks during the future Dev Diaries. So stay tuned.